Welcome back to Harbaugh. You can file this under Hypocrisy Watch. The Miami paper New Times broke a story about an anti-gay leader of the Christian right, Dr. George Reekers, who recently took a European vacation with a male prostitute who advertised himself on rentboy.com. And remember evangelical leader Ted Haggard, he's seen here in the documentary Jesus Camp. So we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. I think I know what you did last night. <laughs> if you send me a thousand dollars, I won't tell your wife. <laughs> If you use any of this, I'll sue you. Well, he resigned after his association with a gay man came to light in 2006, four years ago. Michelle Goldberg writes about this in the Daily Beast piece, quote, the Christian rights gay problem, you called it. And Charles Brands, a spokesman for the Log Cabin Republicans, a great group who support that group, of course, is Republicans who support gay rights. Thank you, Charles, and thank you, Michelle. Michelle, let me read something uh, from your piece. If you summarize a, a 1996 University of Georgia study, and here it is, those most hostile to gay people are often driven by terror and shame about their own desires. That sounds like a generalization. Is everybody who's against gay rights gay? No, not everybody. But what this study shows and what psychoanalysts have argued for a long time, and this study was one of the first pieces of really empirical evidence to back it up, um, basically the study took two groups of men, both men who ident both groups identified as heterosexual, both groups study um, filled out questionnaires to measure how homophobia they were, how homophobic they were, and they found that there was significant more arousal when they showed them gay porn among the men who were homophobic than among the men who weren't. And I think you can see this in some of the rhetoric of the Christian right. It suggests that homosexuality is something that is so incredibly tempting that only mm. the strictest of taboos will stop everybody from indulging in it. This is the rhetoric of people who are deep in the closet. What do you make of that, Charles? That, well, it's a study. Maybe it's worth something. What do you make of it? Chris, it's not just limited to um, to people who, who are strongly homophobic. You see in a lot of different sectors of society, and I'm certainly not going to be making excuses for people like Ted Haggard and people like uh, Dr. Records, but in a lot of different areas in society, we still have institutionalized homophobia. And it's not just religion. It's you know the rap music world. We talked a lot here in the Prop 8 um, aftermath in California about the, the influence of, of homosexuality within the African-American community. We know in the reggae music world, um, even in country music last week, when that country music singer came out as being a lesbian, there was a lot of apprehension. So yeah, but what do you make country, of the, uh, while it has made a lot of progress, we've got a lot of work to it do. Had, we have made enormous progress. This country is so much more open to gay rights and support of a, support of a military service. It's moved dramatic. I watch this stuff all the time. Absolutely dramatic shift towards openness right. and acceptance and more than tolerance, real acceptance. But let me ask you this, Charles. Every, I worked in Washington now for, God, 40 years, and it's pretty well known that there's a a lot of gay men, maybe gay women as well, who work in Republican right-wing politics. They work on Capitol Hill as staffers. It's pretty well known yes, if you we talk do. to gay people, you know. <laughs> and yet, how many are open about it? And how many go along with the, with the right-wing diatribes we just heard? And why well, do they Chris, do it? This is the problem about Chris. This is the problem with Washington D.C. Politics is still an extremely conservative community. We have a lot of people who, regardless if they're a Republican or a Democrat, on either side of the aisle, who are still feeling like they can't be truly themselves. And we've got plenty of examples on the left as well. That's one of the reasons why so many different GLBT organizations advocate people being coming out on their own. But why terms, do they go work for right wingers? And open and truthful. No, Charles, you're missing my point. Why do because, they go get jobs with I, right wingers? if they're not right wing on these because, issues because a lot well a, a lot of us are not single issue voters get, i'm clearly it. openly gay and and we're there is no gay line for environmental rules or energy rules or you know, just because you're gay doesn't mean you support you know taxpayer funded bailouts and don't mean you support socialized medicine we're not single issue voters and just because we're gay doesn't mean that we adopt liberal uh, positions on a lot of other okay. issues that focus on society michelle let me go to this you don't need a poll to know that there's irony in this country i mean Paul, or a study. Irony is the life we live, and hypocrisy may come with the territory of politics. What do you think is the particular thing about men who are clearly, by any definition, gay, and they must know it, singing these songs of anti-gay 
public policy. What, what, what moves them to do it? Um, I think that it's actually something more than simple, um, than kind of complete hypocrisy or complete um, cynicism. I actually think that for somebody like George Reckers or a Ted Haggard, they're probably so they probably hate themselves so much that they're attracted to the idea that homosexuality is a choice or homosexuality is curable and they're kind of desperate to prove yeah. they're desperate to prove themselves and be accepted by the heterosexual okay. world okay i guess when you book a flight with rentboy.com or something you think of it as a choice <laughs> i guess that part <laughs> is guys anyway thank you michelle i don't think of your orientation is a choice by the way i don't think at all i think uh, god has a lot to do with this anyway michelle goldberg Thank you, Charles Moran, sir. I love your organization.